Gemini's latest model, Nano Banana, is breaking the internet. Is it all hype or is it as good as people say it is? Let's find out together. To get started on the homepage of OpenArt, you can simply go up to Image and click on Create Image. And then under the model selection, you want to make sure to select Nano Banana. And if you were to compare this model to something similar, I would put it up against Flux Context, where it has capabilities to do iterative editing. And you typically categorize these kind of models as multimodal because it does more than image generation. You can basically edit your image with a text prompt. Now here's what impressed me the most. The logic of this model is on a different level. If we take a look at this image, you see this guy pulling out a pizza that's totally burnt. And here's another variation. And notice the two hour timing here. <laughs> look at his face. If we take a look at the prompt, the prompt is a pizza in an oven with the door open. Person is taking the pizza out and it was cooked for two hours. Now notice I did not say a burnt pizza. So the model knows that, okay, it was cooking for two hours. Then logically you're going to end up with a burnt pizza. I don't think I've seen prompt adherence at this level from any of the other models. In that example, I saw all over social media, but I can see why. And I applied the same concept with this prompt with a bottle of beer labeled Mons, half of my last name, sits outside on the snow overnight in minus 45 degree weather. And wouldn't you know, the same thing happened where the beer frosts over and it even has a little mini thermostat here saying minus 45 degrees. Here's another example of that. No thermometer, but once again, it understood the logic of the prompt. That's quite impressive in my opinion. Here at OpenArt, we're very focused on character development and character consistency. And I generated this image of a K-pop girl group to use in a short music video demo for Hylio 2. So what I ended up doing was I took this as a reference photo and you can see my prompt here. It's pretty simple. And yes, I used Ideogram V3 to generate it because I really like the photo realism. Stay tuned for that video. And you can put up to four reference images just like you can with Flex Context. And my first test was just to have a solo image of each person in a 16 by nine ratio. If we take a look at the prompt, it says place a woman in the middle alone in the same background in a full body pose. She poses like a model. Pretty simple, right? And as a result of the prompt, we get this, a solo image of the character. The other two people are gone. It's the same background. However, we only got a half body pose and that has to do with my prompting. I could have mentioned her shoes. I could have mentioned her standing on the platform and the aspect ratio plays a factor too. I will say after a few more generations, it did pick up on that. Here's another example, gave her pants, but for the most part, the edit is very clean. It did exactly what I wanted. And I did the same thing with the other characters. But this time in the prompt, it said the woman on the right. You notice the background is exactly the same between images. But most of all, the character is still consistent. Now with her, I did get a full body shot, right? But now this has me thinking of the endless possibilities being a true iterative editing model. And I will say the quality is better than Flux Context where it doesn't really suffer from artifacting. But I will say if you pixel peep, it almost has a graininess to it, which is not a bad thing generally, but it's just something to keep in mind. And of course we can iterate more on the image take something out, add something in. In this case, I gave her a black leather jacket because I felt the white shirt was just too plain. And once again, kept her face consistent. Her necklace here is still there. We've got the leather jacket. And just to emphasize my point, I went ahead and changed the whole outfit of the other character to be all in black. And that worked very seamlessly. And then what I would do is I take those solo images of those characters 
and change the location based on what I needed for the video. And in this case, she's in an alley. I mentioned it's raining. There's pink neon lights in the background. You see the prompt here. And I did this for all the characters and it again keeps it so consistent. Now, it may be too early to say this, but I'm tempted to even say that you might not even have to train a character anymore. Now for the reference image, I used the original one and just prompted to change the location in their outfits. I really liked how this one turned out. And I will call out though, sometimes the hands do look a bit questionable. Now they're pretty decent most of the time, but here you can see kind of looks weird and jagged. One's kind of hiding. The others are a little questionable too, but for the most part, it can do hands fairly well. So as you can see, I've taken these same characters, place them in different perspectives, compositions, environments. And because I was doing a music video, you know, I wanted some shots of them singing. And once again, I want to call out the consistency. If you recall in the earlier images, that tower with this purple neon light, that's still there. So now let's take this up a notch. So I took this character, used her as a reference image, and I prompted for a professional headshot and to change her outfit into a professional business suit. And I got two examples here and a quick note that whatever your reference image is, it's gonna retain that aspect ratio. So if you want a two by three or three by four image to start with, just make sure that your starting image is the aspect ratio that you want. And then one of the images it gave me was her in front of this huge window. And then I thought to myself, this is a great way to test out changing perspective. So I did just that. I prompted for change perspective to higher aerial view looking down, obviously using the previous image as a reference. And then I had her sitting on a desk by the window in the same room. Now remember, we talked about the logic of this model. I prompted for her to sit on a desk and that's exactly what it did for me. So I thought to myself, that's not exactly what I wanted. I wanted her sitting by a desk. So I was a bit more specific and said sitting at a desk by the window in the same room. She is working on her laptop and beside her on the desk is a cup of coffee and a cell phone. She is looking out the window. Now she is looking to the side, which I guess there's a window there. But once again, keeping her likeness, following the prompt to the T. And I even got a little bit of a different perspective here. Now here's what got me all excited. This shot here. I often read in the comments of questions from you guys saying, hey, how do we change perspective without changing the character and the environment, keeping everything consistent? And we see here, now Banana can do it. And the prompt I used was change the camera perspective so that the view is looking at the corner of the room. And I used the previous image that we just looked at as my reference photo. And if you look at the coffee cup and phone, they're in the same place. If you pay attention to the small details, you see it even gave her feet. <laughs> and she's wearing high heels. You ever read those clickbait YouTube titles? Game over, broke the internet. <laughs> I honestly felt that way though, because again, I haven't come across a multimodal model like this that can change the camera angle perspective while keeping the character consistent. And I know we already touched on replacing or adding an object, but I wanted to show you a different example of how that works. And I have this image of a scary rugged man pointing a gun to the camera. The background is a city slum at night and I wanted to have some fun with it. And I put replace the gun with a toy squirt gun. And that's a killer squirt gun, if I may say. Here's a few other variations. But if you notice even the fingers holding the trigger, again, the consistency is maintained. But yeah, it even gets a little bit of the nails right. And of course, being Nano Banana, I wanted to put a banana in his hands here. And we see once again, a few other variations. The thing that gets me is how seamless it is, you know? And, and if I really look at it, there are minor changes to like his hair. I guess there's some sort of masking that happens around it, but 
like if you look at the detail back here, yeah, that changes a little bit, but it's not a big deal. This model is very smart, very aware and logical. Another thing it does well is photo restoration. It's Nano Banana, the Photoshop killer. <laughs> I wouldn't go so far to say that, but it's quite impressive, I would say. So I have an old scanned photo of my grandmother. She's wearing a traditional Filipino outfit. And this was a black and white photo originally. And we see, you know, it's turned to yellow. There's some writing in here that I can't make out. I think it's my grandmother writing something to whoever she gave this. And then there's some writing here. Obviously it looks aged and worn. And then I have an old photo of us in the early eighties. These are my two brothers. I actually have a younger brother too, but, and this is my uncle who's Hungarian. He passed away a couple of years ago. May he rest in peace. But this was the age of breakdancing. So we're doing this weird pose and, and my uncle thought it'd be cool if he did it. Let me know in the comments if you can recognize where I am. But anyways, let's see how we can restore these photos. So in the prompt, I put restore and colorize this photo, remove any scratches, blemishes, and imperfections. And for whatever reason, it did not colorize it, but it did get rid of the writing. So what I ended up doing instead was I said, remove the yellow tint and make this image a cooler tone. Cause I knew it would give me more of a sort of black and white type of image, right? Or I could even prompt it, make this image black and white. Then I was able to prompt colorize this photo. Now I don't know what the original color of the dress was. I suspect it was yellow or white, but you do see a big difference here. Now the background could probably use some color, but with a simple prompt, it did such a great job. And then I prompted remove the writing on the bottom right and top left. And if I switch in between the two, let me show the bigger example here. We see that it got rid of that writing. Now we do lose some detail here, but we can also use upscaling to bring back some of these details. And if you see the before and after, we were able to kind of clean up the image, get rid of the pixelation, the noise, and generally just clean up the image so that if I wanted to print this again, I can do that now. In terms of the upscaling, what I found worked the best was to use precise and ultra. So basically I just went to ultimate upscale and then you have very selections, precise, refined, creative. These two will change the likeness of the image. So leave it on precise. And I also found that fast will tend to change the likeness as well. So if you use ultra, it should retain the likeness of the image. With this photo, it was actually easier to colorize it that the prompt colorizes photo because it was originally black and white. Other than this outfit, if I remember correctly, the color of the clothes are pretty accurate. Now I do question if my brother's pants was actually green here. I think it was blue, but by prompting the boy on the far right changes outfit color to red, this was a more accurate depiction of the outfit I was wearing, yes, that's me. <laughs> Notice we all have sort of that Beatles haircut. This is my oldest brother. We used to kid around that he looked like Bruce Lee when we were kids. He doesn't look like Bruce Lee anymore. <laughs> now, as previously mentioned, you can use up to four images on open art with Nano Banana. So I took a portrait of this woman and an image of a husky. I use these as reference photos. And once again, it keeps the likeness of the original image reference. And then we see another variation here. And ideally you would think that if you use three or four images and do a typical prompt to put these items on this person and it works, right? However, this time I did something different. I prompted for a lay flat photo of a plaid summer dress with matching bucket hat, plain gray background. And we got this cute little outfit with the bucket hat, sandals, a nice bag and sunglasses. And I use this reference photo along with this portrait photo as my reference images. And I prompted place the woman in the uploaded outfit sitting on the grass in a garden. So I didn't even state anything specific and the model figured it out. Now, had I said wearing sunglasses, 
it likely would have put it on her face, but you see the model knew to put the bucket hat on her head and even put the sandals on her feet. What kind of made me laugh though was it still kept the sunglasses on the bag based on the reference image and it kind of makes this bag look like a character on its own. <laughs> So I found that kind of hilarious and I just left it. Theoretically, you can create sort of like a sprite sheet of different accessories or whatever the case may be. And you don't necessarily have to have three or four reference images. In this image, we see the bucket hats off and she's already wearing sandals and we have another pair here. So that's what happens when you're not specific. Even though I wasn't very direct in the prompt, it kind of knew logically where to place them. Another thing it does well is mixed media. So I created this image just of a woman with a fox sitting beside her oddly. And my prompt was fairly simple, make the fox 2D anime style. So we get that mixed media effect of a 2D character within a photo real environment. And then I also tried the fox being in 3D Pixar style, which I think looks pretty cool. I like his expression at the camera, like, huh? <laughs> and then I also tried 8-bit pixel art. So you see it works very well. Now these are just a few examples that I've showed you, but you can do so much more. Obviously you can do iterative editing, like let's say interior design, where you start from a minimal looking living room. You can accessorize it, change the colors. And of course this model is great for image to video. Maybe you want to create some start and end frames, which is now supported with both Kling 2.1 and Hailuo O2. And if you watch the latest demo video that I released yesterday, we also have Ideogram V3, which I mentioned previously. And also we've implemented 11 Labs. Those videos are to come in the next few days. And until that next video, my friends, happy creating.